Everybody, welcome back to NASA in Silicon Valley Live. I'm your host, Abby Tabor. And if this is your first time joining us, NASA in Silicon Valley Live is a conversational show out of NASA's Ames Research Center, where we talk about all the nerdy NASA news you need to know. So right now, we are simultaneously live on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, and Periscope. But if you want to join in the chat and ask our guests questions, you need to do that on Twitch. So join us at www.twitch.tv slash NASA. All right, so today we are talking about how to get an internship at NASA. And this is a fitting topic because it is National Intern Day! Yay. Happy National <laughs> Intern Day! <laughs> so joining us today to answer your questions are our guests, Haley and Abel. Say hi and tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, I'm Haley Feck. I am a coordinator for the NASA internship program here at Ames Research Center. So I get to help bring students here to Ames and then support them throughout their time here. Awesome. Yeah. Nice job. <laughs> Abby, uh, happy National Intern Day. Thank you so much. And, uh, uh, my name is Abel Morales. I'm also an intern program coordinator here at NASA Ames, but I'm also the internship communications coordinator for the agency. So in that role specifically, I get to engage the public to the intern experience. Um, yes. And I do this by highlighting uh, all the fun things that our interns you know, do uh, across our social media platforms. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Excellent. All across NASA, all yes. the interns. Very cool. Nice job also. <laughs> so before we get into talking about internships, I want to remind our audience that we're counting down to an important milestone in human space exploration. So five years from now, we're planning to send the first woman and the next man to the surface of the moon as part of our Artemis program. And this clock you see right here is counting down the days, hours, minutes, and seconds until 2024 when our astronauts will return to the moon. So we'll talk more about that later in the show and get on to our main topic today. So every show that we do, we're always asked the same question, how can I work at NASA? So one of the ways to get started is to become an intern. So that's our first question for you guys today. Everybody wants to know, how do I get an internship at NASA? Right. So it's probably the most common question that we get. Uh, and the first thing we would just recommend uh, students to do is to apply, you know? Just apply. Yeah. It's just as Easy simple as that. As that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So um, internships from NASA are all posted on uh, one specific application system, and that's intern.nasa.gov. Okay. So what's you know great about that application system is that uh, internship opportunities are available year-round. So. Nice. We have uh, three sessions, which are fall, spring, and summer. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, again, um, through intern.nasa.gov, students have the ability to apply to up to 15 opportunity projects. Mm -hmm. And these projects are available for all students. So in high school, if you're a high school student, if you're an undergraduate student and a graduate student, you can apply through intern.nasa.gov. Okay. All sorts of opportunities for people at different levels. Right. Very right. cool. Um, what what does it look like? You're talking about searching for projects on the on the site. What kinds of projects do we mean, and what does that look like? Yeah. So, like Abel said, um, the whole agency uses this one portal. So each of the centers, not just Ames, use this site to post their projects for mm -hmm. interns. Um, and the way it works, you upload one application. So you're filling out, you know, your your school, your major, your work experience, things like that, um, all in one place. And once that's complete and submitted, you can search the portal for different projects. Mm -hmm. And so you can search, you know, you can search by major, you can search by keywords, interests, and um, you can apply to up to 15 of those projects. Okay. Is it like searching through job postings, new, new jobs available yeah, for exactly. interns? Yeah, exactly. There's a, their description yeah. of the project. Um, it'll tell you what center it's located at and any mm -hmm. skill, certain skills that they're looking for. Okay. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the different NASA centers? Yeah. Because you cover all of them in the portal, right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. So there's 10 NASA centers as well as a few field sites, um, and all of them offer internships, and they're all located at that intern.nasa.gov. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so, yeah, we're obviously here in um, Silicon Valley, California, but there's NASA centers down in Southern California, um, Armstrong Flight uh, Research Center. Right. There's obviously Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. Uh, we have Kennedy Space Center in Florida. So right. all sorts of different places. Um, some interns, they choose to apply to centers close to home. Mm-hmm. Um, so whatever's nearest to them. But also each center has kind of their own area of expertise. So if you research the centers, um, and kind of find what aligns best with your interests, you can kind of tailor your applications to that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. If you want to do biology, if you want right. to do aerospace engineering, you can yeah. find a good center for that. For sure, for yeah. sure. Outstanding. All right. So what are some of the specific requirements that people are going to face when they want to apply? Right. Uh, so we have four eligibility requirements. The first one is that you have to be a U.S. citizen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the next one is that you at least have to be 16 years of age. Um, the third is that you have to be enrolled in a degree uh, granting program or institution. Mm-hmm. And the last one is that you at least have to have a 3.0 GPA on a 4.0 scale. All right. Yeah. Okay. People can probably find that stuff on the portal as well, Definitely. right? Definitely, yes. Yeah. Okay. And we'll talk more about those as well. So another question we always get on the show is, what should I study if I want to work at NASA? Do I have to do aeronautical engineering right you need to be this kind of person yeah uh, are there specific majors you recommend so we are nasa we're pretty stem focused it's a lot of science technology engineering and math um those are probably the majority of our internships but mm-hmm. we also do have non-stem opportunities um we have interns in the business office we have interns yeah. in the legal office the education office um communications office so right NASA really does need everyone, and, you know, they need all kinds of interns and all kinds of perspectives. So there's a little something for everyone. I think that's great. I think it's always a surprise to people that, like, oh, if I'm interested in being a lawyer, actually, maybe I could work for NASA. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And we can be people like us, right? (laughs) We're not actually scientists, but we get to contribute to the missions. Yeah, Mm -hmm. and, you know, just going off of that, um, we always tell students that you don't know what projects are available. So I think part of that is for them to kind of check out uh, Mm -hmm. internet.nasa.gov and see what's out there. So... What uh, Haley mentioned earlier, each center is different, and the needs are different at each center. Mm-hmm. So just we just encourage everyone to do their research and see what's out there. Yeah, that yeah. sounds exciting. Go yeah. explore, or dig in there, and see what's available, right? Yeah. yeah. So when and how exactly should people go about preparing their application and submitting? Right, great question. So um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the application system is intern.nasa.gov. Yeah. So um, it's always important to know the deadlines. Um, as I mentioned, you know, we have three uh, sessions that we accept uh, interns. So that's fall, spring, and summer. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it's always great to apply early and plan ahead. Right. So for, you know, the application deadlines, you can visit intern.nasa.gov to see what's ahead. Now would be a great time to start uh, applying for uh, spring 2020. Oh, really? Right. Okay. So, um, so that's pretty far in advance. Right. So I was going to ask you how far in advance is early. In your right. Mind. Anywhere from yeah. at least one to three months ahead. So okay. um, things to expect, uh, you can at least expect to have one letter recommendation. Mm-hmm. So uh, one thing we always recommend to students is that, you know, try to select someone that can speak highly of you, you know, whether yeah. that be your work experience, uh, a college advisor or a college professor. Right. Um, again, you know, we want them to highlight, you know, your strengths. Um, you can definitely have more than one letter of recommendation, but if you uh, if in order for your profile to be complete, you mm-hmm. at least need one. Okay, makes sense. Uh, the second thing is that you can expect to provide a transcript. Mm-hmm. So again, we need to verify that you have a 3.0, um, you know, based on a 4.0 scale. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the application system itself will also ask for a personal statement. Mm-hmm. So be expect to, you know, answer why you and why do you want to intern at NASA. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so. All of these are good reasons to start early, right? Definitely. I know it takes time to order that transcript and give your professor more than a few days <laughs> to write your letter, right? Right, yeah. right. Yeah, and something we recommend a lot is, you know, get started on the application part well in advance, you know, months in advance, but then keep checking back because oh, yeah. sometimes new projects are uploaded um, all the time. So keep checking back to see, you know, what's there, okay. what's available. Yeah. So it's a, a rolling system, yeah. right? Yeah, right. kind Worth of how the projects out. are posted it is. Yeah, mm-hmm. all right. Yeah. The yeah. last thing um, that I also just want to add is that a resume is optional, mm-hmm. uh, but it's highly encouraged. So again, you know, a resume uh, is just a quick snapshot of who you are, right? So mm-hmm. this is a, a great time for you to highlight what STEM or NASA experience you may have. Right. And again, you know, uh, there's different people who are looking at your application, us, and also the mentors. So again, mm-hmm. uh, it's a great opportunity for you to mention what experience you have. Okay, right. And have some bullets of, of interest to your Correct. application. Yes. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. 
Okay, so that's like the nitty gritty, the nuts and bolts of applying. <laughs> Let's talk about why people should. You know, what's so great about being an intern at NASA? Yeah, well, for starters, you're at NASA. Um, for starters, you're gonna have right? a great time here. Yeah, you get to meet the most amazing people. You get to see the most amazing things. You get to really just like geek out for 10 weeks or right. however long you're here. So it's, yeah, incredible experience, first of all, NASA aside. But um, the thing that's unique about our internship program is that interns, they're working hands on on mm, projects, actual yeah. NASA projects. So you're paired with a mentor who's usually, you know, a project lead or some sort of expert in their field, and they're and you're working on their project, you're an integral part of it. Um, so you get to do something, you know, that's actually a part of a NASA mission, which yeah. is really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you're not just watching, you're not standing yeah. by watching them work. You're not just we getting coffee and, you know, <laughs> checking emails, like you're actually doing research, um, which is awesome. And so it's exciting, especially right now with um, the Artemis program, we have students right who their work is, you know, directly related to the Artemis program. So they're helping to put the first woman and, and the next man on the moon mm -hmm. by 2024 and right. then on to Mars. So, yeah, it's Incredible. a really exciting time to be an intern. And they're also yeah. interning during the Apollo 50th Apollo anniversary. 50th. Yes. 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 This past week, which a lot of our interns got to celebrate. Yes. Yeah. Perfect timing. Exactly. Lucky interns this summer. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so I know that the work they're doing here could potentially lead to their future careers, right? Definitely. And actually, Haley, that's what happened for you, yeah. isn't it? Tell us about your story of interning. Um, so a few years ago, I was actually a NASA intern myself. Um, I was in grad school studying education, planning to be a teacher. NASA was nowhere on my radar. The environment was so exciting, the people, everyone's so enthusiastic about NASA work. And so I just I fell in love with it. And, you know, I finished up my master's program mm -hmm. and my mentor at Marshall helped me to find and find full time positions to apply to. And yeah, I ended up here. Outstanding. And still loving it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember you told me the other day everybody was working on the space launch system, yes. the new rocket that's coming, that's and right. you really felt that excitement. Yeah. Right? So I totally yeah. understand the excitement for Artemis that our interns yeah. are feeling now because I was at Marshall. I obviously wasn't working on the rocket or doing anything related, but I just I felt a part of it and it was really exciting and, and it made me want to stay. So so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Good and for I you. Just want to add that these type of success stories are relatively common here at NASA. It's amazing. Um, and in my position, as I mentioned, I get to highlight a lot of these uh, great uh, intern highlights. And um, just on top of my head, I know here at NASA Ames Research Center, our center director, Eugene Tu, was a former intern. That's right. Yeah, I forgot so that. Definitely. <laughs> um, and I know we've also highlighted on our social media platforms that uh, Marshall Space Flight Center, um, Jody Singer was also a former intern. The director oh, wow. there, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, I'm in good company. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then lastly, um, our associate administrator for STEM engagement, uh, Mike and Cade, was also a former intern as well. So again, you That's know, so great. the possibilities are endless. Right, yeah. right. This could be where it all begins. Yeah. Outstanding. Well, that is enough talk about the interns. How about we meet one? I know you guys brought some guests with you. So yeah. let's go ahead and meet our first real live NASA intern. Come on out, Jordan. <laughs> Hey, Jordan. <laughs> Welcome. Oh, how are thank you? you? Thank you for having me. I'm doing great. How are you guys? Well, we're great. We're excited to talk to you about what you're doing here this summer yes. at NASA. Why don't you tell everybody your name and where do you go to school? What are you studying? So my name is Jordan Garland. I am a biology chemistry double major with an emphasis in pre-med and a minor in psychology at Kentucky Wesleyan College. Okay, not bad. Fairly <laughs> impressive. It's a long title. <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding. So, what are you working on here at NASA this summer? So, I am lucky enough to be working on this really cool project on the astrobiology and life support branch here at NASA Ames, working right. with the water group. The so, water the group. big issue for us is water is obviously very important in space, and we use it a lot for our technology, for life support. 
And so we're doing research on using nanoparticles to try to sterilize that water so then oh, we wow. don't run into any type of mutations that could damage the aircraft, damage, you know, any of our life support systems. Okay. So that's what I've been doing right. all summer. So water is critical, right? Because yes. when you say life support, that can be just drinking water, yes. right? Yes. Um, but then also we can make rocket fuel, I gather, from mm -hmm. water. So it's an important resource. Mm -hmm. We're constantly recycling right? it and reusing it. So we yeah. want to make sure it's clean, mm -hmm. nothing goes wrong. Um, so that's where my job plays in. All right. Excellent. Important stuff. Yes, very important. Really cool. <laughs> yeah. And you're really, do you, you feel like you're part of the mission? Because you're, you're working, mm -hmm. you're contributing towards the Artemis program. Do you feel that? Yes, it's so insane. And I was talking about it yesterday. I mean, my grandparents remember like the moon landing and yeah. the fact that my generation gets to be a part of something so amazing and this big milestone of the Artemis program is incredible. And with this internship, you really feel like you're doing work that has purpose mm -hmm. where, um, you're actually hands on and we're doing real research and we're right. not just getting coffee or filling out paperwork. And it's very special. I know everyone here, all the interns have been freaking out and just loving it that we feel <laughs> like even if it's a tiny role, we get to have some sort of role for the future yeah. um, in space. Uh, I think everybody at NASA feels that, so I'm really glad you're getting that this summer even, yeah. And I almost forgot that we had um, a, a little animation to show of the kinds of things your work could support of humans working on Mars. So if we have that available, we could run that while we talk a little bit more about your work. So can you describe a little bit about your water purification or or how you feel you're contributing? Yeah, it's really crazy. Water is used in so much in space with you know, the Artemis mission from Moon to Mars, working with life support, working with um, just the technologies that they run. You know, you need to filter water through that. So it's um, my job is using nanoparticles and different type of like oh, yeah. chemical reactions to try to find ways to avoid any mutation so that we can make sure everything's safe and running. So that's like if there's bacteria in the water yeah, or something? Yeah, if, if there's don't... any bacteria okay. or anything like that. Um, it's really a special thing to be a part of and like I said, you feel like you're doing like real work and that's so exciting and the energy here is just so high being able to, you know, work at NASA and yeah. be able to have work that matters. It's mm -hmm. very, very special. I can imagine. Are you at all surprised to hear this or is this <laughs> typical of interns reactions? intern experiences. Yeah, this yeah. is really typical. When we meet with our interns, you know, they they tell us stories about their friends who are maybe working somewhere else and they're like, you know, they just they don't have an experience like this. They don't get to do something that's real that, you know, will be used at NASA for years and years and years. So, yeah, yeah you're a part of something that that continues even after you finish your internship, which Pretty cool. That's amazing. Yeah. So yeah, someday, you know, you'll get to say those astronauts, they're using something <laughs> that I worked on. Yes, basically, I'm really helping out. I'm yeah. making a big difference. <laughs> and say it was all you. <laughs> it's Everybody all me. is. No one else. else. <laughs> yeah. It's always empowering hearing stories like this. So right. Right. Yeah. This is what you make possible. Definitely. Awesome. What was your reaction when you found out you were going to get an internship oh, at NASA? Goodness. It was the day after my birthday, oh, funnily enough, this. and I was with my best friend in the car and I get this email from Haley saying like, congratulations, we selected you. And I was like a wreck, like crying my eyes. <laughs> Because like, who doesn't dream of working at NASA? Like, it's so incredible. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was like on the phone with um, all my family, my mom, my dad, like freaking out. I was texting everyone. I was like a complete wreck. And I that excitement has not died down even from being here. Like every day I wake up and I'm like, oh my goodness, like I'm, I'm at NASA. Like it's so <laughs> yes. cool. Who wouldn't want to say that? I get to go to work. I get to go to yes, work. It's so exciting. <laughs> NASA. So cool. What was your first impression? And then when you got here, were you intimidated? I also or just cried when I first got here. <laughs> I'm a little emotional. I will say that I um, was driving and I saw the big like hangar, and I just freaked out. My mom was was with me, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, mom! Like this is real! Like this is NASA!" Yes. And I was just flipping out, and I was texting my roommate here, and she cried too. So I felt a lot better. <laughs> um, and then it was very overwhelming when we had orientation, and we got to meet our mentors, and just everyone here is so excited and passionate, and they're so nice. I thought. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, I'm an intern. They're not going to take me seriously. They're going to brush me aside. Mm-mm. But everyone was very like open arms, very excited about like what we can do and what we bring to the table. Right. So it was really nice to feel like valued and important here at the center. For sure. Yeah. I always hear that around the mm-hmm. center. Interns are actually really valuable yeah. members of the team, right? Definitely. Yeah. Excellent. Do you have any advice for students who are thinking about applying? So my advice would be to be confident. Um, I for sure never thought that I would get this, but I just applied. Um, I think when you're doing your application, they have a lot of like short answer type of questions. I think you should really let your personality shine through because they're definitely looking for genuine people. And if you are passionate about something, if you love science and you make that very like your forefront, I think a lot of people kept like really pick up on that. Mm-hmm. So I would say all the mentors here, they're really looking for, you know, an authentic, well rounded person. So I would say definitely just be confident in yourself, put your passions out there and don't be scared because yeah. you could get an internship. That's right. And I don't I'm very grateful I'm here and I definitely when I applied was like, I will not get this. Right, right. But I really just talked about my passions and the pre-med and life support and I'm here. So my advice is just don't doubt yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. Good for you. (laughs) Finding that confidence and you always got to say you can't get it unless I try. So exactly, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. So uh, when you applied, did you apply to multiple projects or did you focus on the one that you knew you really wanted? So on the intern site, you can apply to up to, I think, 15. I think I applied to all of them. It was very easy to apply. They um, have it all broken down by like major interest. So I put in like medical, biology, chemistry, the things that I'm passionate about. And I chose a couple projects and I heard back from this one and I immediately was like, yes, do this one. (laughs) So yes, yes, definitely applied for many, many because like it's NASA. (laughs) That seems like good advice. There must be a lot of people applying, right? Yeah, definitely. So did you apply to all different centers? Yes, I applied to a lot of different centers, mostly Ames, though, because I love California, I love the West Coast, and I just I really liked this center particularly, but I applied to a bunch of them. All right, yeah. Cool. Any, uh, any other questions that you guys have always wanted to ask your interns once they've oh gotten here? <laughs> um, what is something that surprised you about NASA? Yeah. What's something, something that you didn't surprised expect? me. I would say how we do real work here. Mm -hmm. Like I kind of was walking into this thinking I'm going to be filling out paperwork or not being able to really work in a lab. But I got here and my mentor was like, free game. Like, here's your lab. Here's the issue that we have. And we want your ideas. Mm -hmm. And I was very surprised to feel very valued here and to feel like if I was sitting in a meeting that I could actually bring something up and that would be taken into consideration and I was able to really do actual lab work like I work in a lab every single day and that that was surprising and then like the best way possible yeah but so did you come in prepared already to know how to work in a lab or did they train you when you got here they did train me when I got here I had some lab experience but they're really good about like safety training making you feel comfortable and the atmosphere is so great here that like I'm not afraid to ask a question so Mm -hmm. if I'm not sure if I'm doing something right or my experiment is just like not gone how I wanted to I feel very comfortable here because they set up that atmosphere where you can just sit down with any of the scientists and be like hey I need a little bit of help I'm a little lost Um, and everyone I've worked with has really taken time out of their day to help me out even people that aren't my mentor but like the other scientists in my building they've really made me feel comfortable and helped me a lot that's wonderful to hear yeah that is good to hear outstanding any final thoughts you would like to add (laughs) um just i love it here everyone should apply uh don't be scared to apply it's this has been probably the best summer i've ever had and it's just been an amazing experience wonderful oh yeah i'm happy for you thank you for coming and sharing thank you. this thank experience thank you for having me wonderful it's so great well good luck with your internship <laughs> thanks oh, <laughs> two more weeks okay <laughs> talk to you later all right so to apply for an internship at nasa for more information learn more about it you want to go to the website intern.nasa.gov
So that was really inspirational. Like, I want to be a NASA intern now that I have heard Jordan's experience. <laughs> I did some cool internships, but nothing that rivals that. So that's awesome. Yeah. You guys put these possibilities together for them. Yeah, it's nice to hear, like, she was so excited getting an email mm -hmm. from me. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> it's always a high energy time whenever interns are here, and their energy yeah. is our energy. So Definitely. it's always good to hear. Uh, it definitely shows around the center when, like, if there are talks, it's packed. The yeah, auditorium yeah. is packed because the interns are really excited to be here and learn and be exposed to all these different NASA yeah. topics. So, it's yeah, a good it's reminder exciting. for me. Like, there's cool stuff happening here. Go see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding. All right. So let us do some rapid fire right. what if questions. Mm -hmm. All right. If you guys are up for that, let's do it. All right. So people are, are everybody's going to have their own special case, right? But these are some common ones like, what if I'm in high school? Can I intern at NASA? Yeah, so there's a minimum age requirement. You have to be at least 16 years old. But as long as you're 16 or older, we do have opportunities available for high school students. All right. So yes, apply. Yes. <laughs> OK. And earlier you talked about the GPA requirement. What if I don't quite have that? Like, is that firm or? What can I do to address that? Right. So we understand that an intern is a student first, right? So yeah. if you don't have the GPA, we always encourage students to focus on school first. Mm -hmm. Once you do have the GPA of a 3.0 on a 4.0 scale, yeah. you know, uh, as I mentioned earlier, our internship opportunities are available year round. So yeah. once you do have a 3.0, we just encourage you to apply then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just get your GPA up. Try again the next session. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go back. Focus. Yeah. Work hard and come back again when you're ready. Exactly. Now, what if I'm not a U.S. citizen? So, What's the situation there? Yeah, the NASA internship program, it's required um, that our interns are U.S. citizens. There yeah. are a few select opportunities for um, international students through the International Internships Program, and there's more information about that at intern.nasa.gov. Okay, good to know that those yeah. exist. A few, so, a few, so, yes. A few, right. <laughs> a few. So not, not many, but we have so many viewers around the world who are excited about NASA. Right, and right, right. It's good for them to be able to... F Go look into that. Um, what if I recently graduated from college? Do I have to feel like, oh man, I missed my chance? Is it too late? So it's not too late. Uh, okay. You're still eligible uh, six months after you graduated, so you would still be eligible if that's you. But okay. Yeah. All right. Six months after graduation. Yes. So it's pretty it's common when students graduate in May, um, they're still able to intern the following summer and oh, yeah. also the following fall. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. The next two sessions. Yep. All right, very good. What if I'm enrolled at community college? Yes, definitely. You know, um, it, as long as you're enrolled in a degree granting program or institution, you're, you're eligible. So that includes community college students. Um, another program that we encourage community college students to check out is uh, the NASA Community College Aerospace Scholars, also known as NCAS. Oh. So we've seen a lot of NCAS students become NASA interns. So that's something uh, for those community college students to check out. All right. A program mm -hmm. specifically for community college and maybe from there mm -hmm. yeah. enter into the internship program. Right. And simultaneously, awesome. you can uh, apply to both programs as well. Okay. Yeah. Very good. All right. Let me see about taking some questions from the chat. Okay. Uh, well, I think this one we have answered, but it depends on this person's timing. Buster Cherry asks, can you pursue an internship even after graduating with an aerospace degree? You Do sure can. You sure can. <laughs> Up to six months yes. after graduation. Yes. You can. All right. Very good. Um, good question here. Uh, the real Seinfeld. I'm applying for an internship at NASA and I need a letter of recommendation. I know someone at NASA, but are they allowed as a NASA employee to write a letter of recommendation? Yeah, they yeah. are. Mm -hmm. And we, we see that that's pretty common. Um, yeah. So, for example, like mm. the students who do NCAS, they'll ask their NCAS mentors to write them a letter of re recommendation. So definitely something we see definitely allowed. <laughs> right. And just as a reminder for letters of recommendation, you always want someone that can speak highly of you. So if that's the person, yeah. then yes. Okay. Yeah. That's great. That's a really specific question that that yeah. person needed answers. So I'm glad you had the answer. Uh, here's a question, a rhetorical question from Space TV Net. Is there a cooler internship anywhere in the universe? Definitely not. I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent point. Um, here we also half answered this. Well, we'll remind them of the possibilities. Risha B. Risha B. Eight six three seven. Is there any possibility of a person from India to be an intern at NASA? Yeah, they would need to go visit intern.nasa.gov to see um, if their country is, is one of the agencies that we have a partnership with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Uh, and that goes also for a moot. Is there any way to get in without being a U.S. citizen? There could be, depending on programs offered yep, by right. your country, right? Mm -hmm. And they can learn more at intern.nasa.gov. That's mm -hmm. right. That's a, the one-stop shop yeah. yes, for internships at NASA. Yeah, it, it says right on the homepage, I think, um, like I am an international student right. or something, and you click it, and yeah. you can get all the information there. Okay, that's good. So yeah. that yet yeah, it helps you kind it's of very clear. filter yeah. <laughs> out the information you need. Yeah, right there. Awesome. Um, let's see. Let's see. I have some of my questions. I have mm -hmm. some of the chat's questions. Um, I like this person a lot. I'm interested in, in their profile, the JP guy. I have a philosophy degree. Can I find a job anywhere at NASA? Yeah, you know, uh, as we mentioned, uh, well, as Haley mentioned earlier, you know, we do have some non-STEM uh, majors uh, opportunities for folks, uh, you know, not studying STEM. So we mm -hmm. just encourage you to visit intern.nasa.gov, check out the projects that are available, read the project descriptions, and if it's a project that interests you, apply. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Bariluto3 says, too bad I'm 16. But why? Because yeah. what's the minimum age? <laughs> minimum age is 16, so, so send it. You too, Bariluto3, you can apply. <laughs> if you meet the other requirements, you're old enough. Or hang in there until you finish school and come back in college, right? All right. Um, there are loads more questions. We can always come back to these. So I do want to jump ahead to our next intern Great. so we can get another story out here for people to experience. So this time we're going to meet Vanessa. Come on out, Vanessa. Hear about another NASA story research going on this summer. Hey! Yeah. Hi, y'all. Thanks for joining <laughs> us. Thank you for having me on. I'm so excited. How are you doing today? I'm doing super good today. Um, yeah, just coming off of work. We did a lot of research in the lab today, so it's been a good one. Very good. Well, why don't you tell everybody your name, where you're from, yeah. what are you studying? Yeah, okay, so I'm Vanessa. Um, I am a senior at Stanford, and I also have kind of a mouthful of a major. Um, I'm a human biology major with a concentration in neuroscience, brain, and behavior. Um, and then I minored in astronomy and astrophysics. Um, so yeah, I love that. Me. You sound like someone who is passionate about all sorts of things and you didn't want to have to decide, <laughs> so you just went for it all. Yeah, it's actually really exciting um, because a lot of people are like, oh, that seems so different, like astrophysics and biology. Um, but it's actually really, really interesting because they go hand in hand pretty well. Um, one of the things that I'm really, really passionate about is studying life um, in the universe and mm -hmm. life and planets and worlds beyond our own and how we can foster that. Searching um, for life so out there beyond Earth. Yeah. Yes, you yeah. got them both in there. I mean, it sounds like you're in the right place. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. And it's really cool because Ames um, is one of the NASA centers that specializes or has a lot of labs that work in the biosciences. Mm -hmm. um, so astrobiology is a big thing here, and it's really exciting, the work that people are doing. It is exciting. But what exactly are you working on, specifically? Yeah. So right now, I work in an amazing lab. My mentors are really cool. Um, shout out to Bill Toscano and Patricia Cowings. <laughs> <laughs> and we work in the psychophysiology lab. Psychophysiology? Yeah. So it's really amazing work. Um, one of their biggest projects is they've created a training program for astronauts um, called AFTE, and it basically allows astronauts to control different physiological conditions in space um, and on Earth such as their heart rate, breathing rate, oh, temperature, wow. um, mentally. So that's really wow. amazing. It's a six hour training program and once huh. they go through it, um, they can really control these things and it helps in space a lot with motion sickness because um, that's a symptom frequently experienced by a lot of astronauts and also when they get back down to Earth, they're a little dizzy and disoriented. Um, and this mental training in six hours, um, it's clinically, they did clinical trials and it works better um, than the shots that people would have for like motion sickness motion medicine. Sickness. Oh my gosh, wow. So That's it's amazing. really cool stuff. And then right now we're doing a second fold project as well where we're working on a biosuit um, paired with the Canadian Space Agency as well and it can help astronauts monitor their physiological conditions in space too and report it back to them real time. Wow. So we're testing it out in the lab right now. How cool. Yeah. Awesome. Ah, this is amazing. I don't know where to begin. Um, the, the motion sickness yeah. studies, what, what are you doing to study that? What? Yeah. So our lab is infamous for this thing that we call the chair. The um, chair. And it's, uh, yeah. That's a little so, ominous. Yeah, it's a rotating <laughs> chair, um, and it spins at increasing rotations per minute, and it mimics motion sickness symptoms in space um, that astronauts often experience. And so we're testing our test participants in the chair um, and seeing how they feel as time goes on 
and they're also wearing the suit. So we're able to oh, see wow. like on our devices and they could see as well on their iOS device, their heart rate, breathing rate, blood pressure. And that's really indicative of how sick they're feeling. Mm, okay. um, and then after they do the training, they're able to see the a screen with their physiological conditions and rates and things like that and mentally bring these things up or down in ways that wow. mitigate sickness. So it's really cool. And that is really cool. <laughs> so yeah, we got a spinning chair in our lab. Right. Yeah. Have you tried Have you ridden in yeah, the spinning chair? Oh, out? I wish. So you have to go through medical clearance, unfortunately, uh, so as interns are liabilities. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I'd be willing to give it a try, but I don't know. I got yeah. sick on a whale watch last year. I'm not sure I'm the best <laughs> candidate for the rotating chair. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So I can see how your work is going to contribute to the Artemis program. Do, yeah. do you feel that in yeah. your day to day here? How do you feel about that? Yeah, so it is really, really exciting to be working at NASA during this time. All the interns are really grateful. We can feel the energy. Um, it's really cool because they're actually flying these spacesuits at the International Space Station right now. They really are. Wow. Um, and so we're continuing to test out the model and figure out ways that we can improve on it. Um, and a lot of amazing astronauts um, have worked with my mentors and had the motion sickness training themselves. Like Mae Jimson had it, and she. we have a ton of pictures of them in our all of our lab and like cool. they're signed like never felt sick again like really great things <laughs> um, so yeah my mentors are pretty much the goats and it's really exciting to work with them especially during this time knowing that you're working on something that's going to carry people especially on longer missions when we're headed to the moon headed to mars from there um and that can take a really big toll on the body that we haven't foreseen before mm -hmm. taking such long space flights mm -hmm. um so they're really going to need a lot of people in biology and medicine coming up yeah. to support this program so it's an exciting time for everyone well awesome. said that is exciting do you have a favorite thing about your internship? Yeah. So my favorite thing about my internship, I have two. My first one is just really actually getting to contribute to the work that our lab is doing um, and interacting with our test participants and like talking to them. And we have different tests in the chair. They'll exercise wearing the suit to mimic a lot of conditions that astronauts might be under and see if the suit holds up in them. Um, and interacting with them, you're actually a researcher. I've got a clipboard. Like <laughs> I'm running the experiment. Um, wow. Sometimes our mentors are there, sometimes they're not. Um, so you're really like in charge of the experiment. And that's really cool to have that handed to you um, and to be able to make an impact and to be treated taken seriously. Mm -hmm. Like when you come on and being able to prove that, yeah, I can step up and do this. It's a really good feeling to contribute. My second thing is hearing really cool stories from my mentors. They've been working at NASA for over 40 years. Wow. Um, so they're amazing. So they have tons of stories about like going in the zero G planes, interacting mm -hmm. with astronauts, cosmonauts, and like the Japanese astronauts all receive training from them. So that's one of my favorite things too, is to hear the stories um, and hear about their life experiences here. And you really feel a part of a legacy oh, of yeah. like space innovation and just exploration. And it's really exciting. That is exciting. Yeah. You feel the past that came before you, yeah. and you know you're contributing to the future to come. Yeah. That's so awesome. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know that we have a comment from Higher Learning who says, <laughs> I want to work with Vanessa. <laughs> yes, I want to work with you too. <laughs> and this person is sending in my application ASAP. <laughs> yes, send them in, send them in. Um, it's great that you can apply pretty much any time of the year. It's really exciting. Outstanding. Uh, how cool is she? Jeez, somebody oh, says. So <laughs> you nice. are cool. They're embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad to know you, Vanessa. Uh -huh. um, I'm looking for other questions yeah. that might be great for you. Mm -hmm. uh, well, someone's asking, what is the process of getting the internship? Specifically, what time did you apply? And mm -hmm. you plan on staying? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure about that part. But yeah. um, could you tell us a little bit about like how yeah. far in advance did you apply? Mm -hmm. Did you choose a bunch mm -hmm. of projects or one? Or yeah. So I chose a lot of projects at Ames since I had a lot of biology based programs and I'm a biology major, mm -hmm. um, not a flight engineer or anything like that. But yeah, so they had a lot of Ames. And so I filtered it um, by biosciences, biology, cell science, things like that, things that I was really interested and excited about. Um, and I found three that I applied to here that like really stuck out to me. Um, so I started applying probably thinking about it like three months in advance. I started writing my application about one month in advance, mm -hmm. but I think that it is really important with some cool advanced planning that you can do starting in the months prior 
um, I really, really recommend thinking about like things that you could say or like passions that you could write about that really makes your personality shine through your application. But also thinking about your letter of recommendation and who's going to write it and like who you want to speak on your behalf and if that person can actually show some stories about you and like how you've taken X skill that they have on the application and a story about how you've applied it. And also putting that in your own application, like kind of spitting out the qualifications that they want, but with an example mm -hmm. that you've done on your own is really great. Um, and another thing about letters of recommendation that I learned in college that is really helpful is that you don't actually have to let your recommenders like go into the wind and just say, hey, can you write a recommendation for this program? Um, you can actually suggest certain talking points um, when you talk to them or email them like, oh, it would be awesome if you could speak about how I led this experiment or how I right. did this and give them a list of things. And they actually love that because it makes their job a lot easier because yeah. um, then it's a shorter process for them to write. So like, oh, yes, yes. So you can kind of right. write your own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you as long as it's right. true. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> They're not going to write anything that's not true, but yeah. you're reminding them, mm -hmm. I did this and this and that. Yeah, and yeah. Don't forget how passionate I am about this stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome. That's really good, concrete advice. That's really helpful. Uh, I don't know. Do you have any final thoughts you would just love uh, to share about your experience? Can I, can I ask yes. if you've worn the suit? Oh. Yeah, I have worn the suit. Um, it kind of fits like a leotard with a little headband. Uh, you feel really official because like, it really <laughs> does look like some kind of space suit that you're wearing. Awesome. Um, and there's some sensors and a little plug patch and like plugs and it sits in the pocket of the suit um, and you just feel like oh I'm ready to go I'm suited up <laughs> it's really cool yeah just one of the perks of the job you get yeah. to put on the suit yeah. yeah yeah and I guess a final piece of advice I have is just what you've been hearing to apply um, yeah. apply 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 it's a really really exciting time to be working at NASA right now um, especially with the Artemis program coming up like you will be contributing to the future of space exploration right. and that is so exciting <laughs> and so put in those applications and you never right. know great message i'm so glad you get to be a part of it it's exciting all right thank you for yes. stopping by today yes Yay. thank you guys and for having me good luck with your research bye y'all thank you <laughs> bye. bye awesome another one that i want to be Right. I, know, I decided I want to be Jordan and I want to be Vanessa in my next life. I've been to her lab a couple times and yeah. it's so cool. <laughs> in your jobs, do you guys get to tour all mm -hmm. the different labs and see oh, what's yeah. going on? We make sure to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Uh, we have a bunch more questions before moving on. Um, someone is asking if these are paid interns. It kind of depends on center, um, but if you're at intern.nasa.gov, those volunteer projects should be like clearly labeled. So okay. no surprises, right. you're getting paid unless it says volunteer. <laughs> All right, yeah. Um, NASA Katie Harvey, NASA in the name, mm -hmm. that, that tells us something. Since NASA doesn't provide housing, what would you recommend high school students do for the summer that are from out of state? Um, you mentioned the stipend can help cover the cost right. of housing. Mm -hmm. I think uh, that kind of goes with like just planning ahead, right? So yeah. if you know you're applying for you know the summer session, uh, just look at the center that you're uh, considering and um, consider the area where they're at. So mm -hmm. um, oftentimes our interns, you know, across the agency will either look at Airbnb or you know um, check out different housing options, you right. know, in the area. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we kind of, when, once students are accepted, we'll send out some housing like resources mm -hmm. and recommendations, and I think most centers do that. So we try to help you know you know what's yeah. there, because we know a lot of people are coming mm -hmm. from, from out of yeah. state. Yeah, yeah, and I imagine future interns can be in touch with each other, maybe become yeah. roommates. Exactly. Definitely. Yeah. That kind of thing can help. Yeah. yeah, we help get them connected before they're here, so, okay. so they can find roommates. That helps. Um, I saw a good one that I wanted to cover. Here's one. Space TV Net is asking, can people with a disability become a NASA intern? Of course. Mm -hmm. Yes, plain and simple. Easy yes. answer. Yeah, yes. plain and simple. <laughs> um, Astrobee, Astrobee Cal. Oh. We have a project called Astrobee. You too. We have interns working on yeah. Astrobee. Uh, does your major impact the project that you work on as an intern? Say, for example, if you apply as an engineering major, you might work on rockets, or biology majors might work on recycling water for trips to the moon. Yeah, so usually the projects are aimed at specific majors. Sometimes, though, um, 
there's projects where the mentors, they, they just take a group of students and then, you know, they'll tailor it more towards you. So they'll, if they have an engineering mm-hmm. student, they'll kind of give them that portion of the project and, um, yeah, things like yeah. that. Oh. All right, cool. So speaking of mentors, uh, okay. Vanessa was just talking about how hers are so amazing and she mm-hmm. really appreciates working with them. What exactly is the role of the mentors? Can you describe how they work with their students? Yeah. So our mentors, I mean, they're really amazing and they're obviously, you know, experts in their fields. And so they're working day to day with the interns. They're, you know, providing them support, teaching them, sharing their knowledge with them, giving them all the necessary training. Um, so yeah, so they're a huge part of the internship program, of course. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and just another thing to add, without our mentors, internships wouldn't exist. So they're yeah. very critical to the internship program. Right, right. They're the other half. Interns yes. yeah. and mentors, right? Exactly. Yeah. And you guys talked about interns becoming employees sometimes. Mm-hmm. Do you have any that then became mentors? Yes, yeah. definitely. Yes. Sure so, so they know the experience <laughs> <Yes>. themselves. <laughs> yeah, I awesome. actually think a lot of our mentors um, were once interns. So mm-hmm. that kind of that helps a lot because yeah. they're they really have that perspective and, and right. they know what kind of support our interns need right, right. Yeah. you guys actually invited a mentor here to join us to we tell did. us himself about the experience so we're going to meet george now come on out george <laughs> mentor extraordinaire hey <laughs> Good to see you. How are you? Great to be here. I'm great. Thank you so much. Excellent. So you're one of our star mentors <laughs> with interns of your own. Why don't you introduce yourself and tell everybody what you work on here, first sure. of all. Uh, my name is George Grosby. I'm a research engineer here uh, within the Diagnostics and Prognostics Research Group in the Intelligent System Division. All right. Yeah. That also is a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> we'll ask you a little more about your work in a bit. Um, but you have you have chosen interns yourself who have come to work with you. What kinds of things are you looking for when they apply? Uh, typically, I look at uh, the type of skills the interns list on their resume and how they've used those skills in experiences in in projects. Mm-hmm. So if someone says, "Oh, I know C plus plus," I'd like to look. I look at their resume and see how they've used it in the past. Uh, and to what degree they, they've used it. Yeah. So like our intern said, be specific in your application, right? Yeah. Someone yeah. like George is looking to see, what did you do with that exactly. skill you have? Yeah. Excellent. Um, I think you must look for people who are passionate, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I often like look that. for people who express themselves in their application. I read through all of the different uh, fields that are, that are in the intern application, and then I look at the resume. Mm-hmm. I love people who are excited about space exploration, excited about robotics, excited for an opportunity to work here at Ames. Right, right. That's, yeah. that's like a minimum, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's definitely excited. something we hear a lot from our mentors. Um, I said before, we you know see hundreds and thousands of transcripts that all you know look pretty similar but Mm -hmm. what sets it apart is kind of like what you're doing in your free time what you know are you teaching yourself how to code are you working on your pilot's Mm -hmm. license things like that what what do you have to offer nasa Mm -hmm. yeah we like we like people who love to learn yes that makes sense that's a a prerequisite (laughs) for (laughs) learning throughout life Yeah, yeah exactly so george why don't you tell us your story exactly how did you get to nasa yeah. How'd that play out? I was very, very lucky. I got into a very small program that existed a few years ago called the Tribal Universities and uh, Tribal Colleges and Universities Program. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a program at NASA specific for Native American students. That's amazing. That's it was great. really amazing and it was a really life changing uh, uh, experience. Once I got here, I spent the entire summer working with my mentor on a robotics project. Mm-hmm. I said, this is my foot in the door. I'm going to take advantage of it. Yeah. And it worked out really well for me because the very next summer I was invited back to, to NASA to take part in the NASA Academy for Robotics. Oh, wow. And then the following summer I got invited back again for the NASA Academy for Space Exploration. All right. It's a really great program that was uh, a type of leadership development program. Uh, and then immediately afterwards, I was lucky enough to get hired full time. Nice. And now uh, I live the dream every day. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like something you told me one time that when you were starting that first program, you were really intimidated and you felt like, oh, they're all going to be geniuses. And what if I'm not? Oh, that's and so then, true. Yeah. But is that is that what you found when you got here? Uh, it's not at all that way. In fact, so I was very worried. I was very worried that everybody here at NASA thought I was a genius and that they had very high expectations of me. And in actuality, uh, what we expect of our interns is that they find that we give them a problem they need to learn develop new skills get new knowledge and then solve that problem 
they don't have to be an expert to be an intern. Yeah. But we love it when they can learn, grow, and then help us solve the real problems that we have. Right, yeah. right. You're not supposed to already know everything yeah. when you get here. You're here to learn, right? Um, so we we heard from our two interns that visited that they're contributing to the Artemis program. What about your interns? What are they working on, and how is that supporting the, the program? Yeah, I, in fact, I've got four interns this summer, and one oh, of them, wow. Ben, is working on a cryogenic fuel valve test bed. Hmm. Uh, this t t What's this, that about? <laughs> this is really exciting. Cryogenic fuel, right? Uh, so these valves are used for fueling up rockets that eventually launch and go to space. Ah, uh, yeah. The, the problem is these valves, they control the flow of cryogenic fuel from fuel depots to the rockets before liftoff. And if any of these valves fail during that process, you got a big problem. Either the fuel doesn't flow and then nobody gets to go to space that day, oh, yeah. or the fuel flows without stop into a completely full rocket. And oh, that's no. another different and dangerous problem. <laughs> right. So it's really important to understand the health state of these systems. And Ben has helped me to do that, carry out experiments. And now we're developing algorithms that can help us better understand when these systems may fail in the future. Pretty important. Pretty good stuff. Th this is one of the many things that I'm like, oh, yeah, I never thought of that. But obviously, someone has to fuel up the rocket. Yeah. <laughs> and you got to have a valve that's going <laughs> to stop fueling up the rocket at the right time. And these Amazing. Are really, yeah, these are really important even for uh, the future of the agency, for things like uh, the Lunar Gateway and for possible lunar colonies. Because in each case, we'll have to fuel up rockets yeah. uh, for propulsion. Oh, interesting. I have some questions that you might be able to answer sure. from the chat. Uh, the coconut milk. <laughs> <laughs> Is it okay to not have any outside experience for the internship? Uh, like, as in, I'm looking to start building experience at NASA. Would that work out? Yeah. Well, I think that uh, if you can seek out things like online courses, make learning a priority for yourself and show that you've learned... Uh, some skill, like I learned Java using this online course. Well, that's some experience that you can put on your resume mm -hmm. that you don't have to wait for anybody else for. Yeah. You can get started on that today. Yeah, yeah. Good tip. To add on to that, you yeah. know, uh, students are always uh, able to update their application on oh. intro.nasa.gov. So, you All know, right. just to go off of what George has mentioned, yeah. once you get that experience in, make sure to update your profile. Oh, that's really good. Yeah. So once you send it in, it's not gone for good. Right. You go and update it. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's really smart. Um, George, how was the interview process when you were becoming an intern? Oh, when Do you I remember it might be a while ago. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I was really, uh, I was really nervous about the interview process. Uh, but in, in actuality, everybody here is really, really nice. My interview, uh, I was asked a whole bunch of questions about my experience, about things that made me excited about robotics at the time. Mm -hmm. um, it was really fun. And the person that I inter that interviewed me is actually still a really good friend of mine here at the center. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> so it turned out OK. Yeah. <laughs> um, on your early projects as an intern, did you work on robo robotics projects that involved robotics design? Or are interns usually heavily involved in programming? Uh, was it like varied, a well-rounded experience, or it, it can be ver it can be incredibly varied. In fact, uh, for me, I had to work on the hardware, and when I was done working on the hardware, I had to work on the software. And in certain cases, both the hardware and the software needed uh, needed uh, extra work. Uh, it was it was pretty varied. And some of the interns I have now, some of them are purely programming, some of them are doing hardware, some of them are doing hardware and programming. Okay. Yeah. All sorts of things. Which is great because you want to be exposed to as much as you can when you're an intern. You're not quite sure maybe what you want to do for the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When I develop pro projects for interns, I try and think of things that uh, allow them to grow personally and also help us with our projects. Yeah. 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 That's a nice point. You're not just, it's not a one-way street. <laughs> yeah, it's important. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, trying to decide what to ask you next. Um, a specific one from Miguel B714 uh, for George. I don't have extracurricular projects, extracurriculars or projects under my belt, but I do work full-time at an aerospace machine shop. Will I be passed over? This maybe for you guys, too, from what you've seen in applications. Yeah, not at all. In fact, uh, I'd love to see some of the things that you've, produced there you know yeah. definitely highlight the all the skills that you've gained in employment um, and even some of the responsibilities that you've taken on as a full-time employee mm -hmm. uh, that's those are all great things to have as an intern right yeah, yeah. Just yeah. To add on, um, you know 
in that personal statement section, I think that would also be a great opportunity for the student to just highlight, you know, what they learned from this experience. So, right. um, again, it's their opportunity to kind of show the mentor, you know, what type of skills uh, they've learned and also what their potential is as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is great. This, as usual, there's so much good stuff to talk about. We're running out of time. So I'm, I'm going to give you one more question. Or if you have any final thoughts you'd want to share for potential interns. Yeah, I think that it's really important to, first of all, apply. Uh, there's lots of there's lots of opportunities here, but you're not going to get any of them until you apply. Yeah. Uh, be genuine on your resume. Tell us why you love NASA and get ready for an exciting summer. Oh, that, right. that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I don't doubt that a bit. <laughs> All right. Well, we're, we're running out of time, so I don't, I don't want to forget to get in some of the information you have to share with people. Um, well, we know one source of information. If all of this has gotten you excited to apply, go to intern.nasa.gov to learn about how the process works, deadlines, potential projects, requirements, everything you need to apply. Uh, but Abel has some other resources where people can learn about the stories of interns and different kinds of opportunities, right? Right, yeah. So there's three ways. Uh, the first is that we have uh, intern stories and blogs. So if you want to learn more about the intern experience uh, from the intern perspective, and most of these blogs are written uh, you know, from the interns themselves, visit blogs.nasa.gov slash interns. Mm -hmm. um, also, we have our social media platforms, as I mentioned. So we're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, on Facebook and Twitter, we use the handle NASA Interns, and then on Instagram, we're at uh, NASA Internships. Mm -hmm. The last thing is that um, nowadays on social media, you can fo follow hashtags. So w I encourage everyone to, on any of those social media platforms, to search for hashtag NASA Interns, and then you'll see a lot of the stuff that NASA posts, but also from uh, the intern um, experience. The interns specifically, so you'll see oh, some of their posts as well. Yeah, yeah. the interns themselves. Yeah. yeah, and especially today because it's National Intern Day, yes. there's Nobody. all kinds of posts. We're all over social media, so today's yes. a good day to check it out. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure after listening to everybody today that those are really genuinely interesting stories because our interns are doing real research that's pushing forward all of our missions. So yeah, yeah I will right. check it out for National <laughs> Intern Day. Mm -hmm. So we are almost out of time, but I'm going to throw a few more questions in just to round out the day. Can interns become astronauts? Yes. Why not? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Sky's the limit, I think. Is there a max age for new NASA interns? No. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. No max you're in age. School. Yeah, as long yeah. as you're currently in school, enrolled okay. in school. So I could go back to school mm -hmm. and I could come be an intern with George. Yes. 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 If he takes Absolutely. me. If he accepts yes. me, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, do you know the, the amount or the number of high schoolers compared with college students? Does um, it tend to be college more than high school? Yeah, it's, it's definitely mostly undergrad. Um, then the second largest group is probably our graduate students and then with a few high schoolers <laughs> here and there. Here's my last question of the day from Lil Schedule. <laughs> Sorry for butchering that. Can I be 92 and still apply? Sure. Yes. 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 No yes. one will stop you. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> I'm sure you have many skills to bring. <laughs> all right. Uh, any, any final words of advice? Go for it. Just Go apply. For it. it all just starts yeah. with applying. Yep. Oh. Yeah. That's where it begins. All right. Well, this has been really inspirational, and I hope we're going to get lots of new applications because we need everybody's help. Yeah. Right. Excellent. Well, that is all the time we have for today, but a huge thanks to you guys, our guests, and to everyone that joined us in the chat on Twitch. We will see you next time. Thank you for watching. See ya. <laughs>